Yo, comic fam, it is crazy to think that I've been doing the trending 10 video for over five years straight without skipping a beat. Whether I'm sick or in Washington or in New York or like today, I am in Vegas. Real talk, I can't even enjoy the convention until I've done the research on the trending 10 and have completed this video. So hit the like, slap the subscribe, and let's chat about the most popular books in the world. Number 10 on the list is Scott Snyder Goodness, a comic book that was sent to auction status back in 2021, soon after its release. We have Noctera issue number one. This came out in 2021, and we're seeing $18 average sales. The heights this book reached was soon after the option status was granted, where a 9.8 hit $163. And this may be the time to buy this comic book if you're considering specking on it. Why? Well, the most recent 9.8 sale was only $36. It doesn't get much lower than that. Writer Roberto Patino, you know him from DMZ and Westworld, is attached to produce this Netflix series. And we found out last month that James Wan, who's known for so many of his horror projects, has his atomic monster company attached to produce Noctera. Now, the only sports ball that I ever followed or cared about growing up was baseball. I'm from New York, so I've always been a Yankees fan. And I played in high school, so that was the main reason why I followed it. Well, similar to me, Scott Snyder loves the Yankees. And while watching the Yankees game in between batters, he went to Twitter and said, in between batters, ask me anything. And he got some interesting questions from the comic fam. The first question was, what comic series story you worked on or created would you love to see as a video game? His response, Noctera would be a fun one. The question was then followed up with this one. Who would you cast as Val for the Netflix series? His response, my choice would be Melissa Barrera. You know her from Scream 5 and Scream 6. She'd be great. We're big fans in our house. I want to know from the community in the comment section below, is the affordable CGC buy-in making you interested to spec on Noctera now? Or is the Netflix ties preventing you from going all in because you know that it's likely going to hurt the collectible long term because their binge model is horrible for the needed hype for collectibles to rise in price? Regardless, you need to read this comic book. It's post-apocalyptic. It has some Mad Max vibes to it. And it has some awesome creatures because you got to stay in the light or else you will transform into a monster. Now we're at the list at number nine with Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man issue number five. This came out this year and it spiked at release because of the featured character, their debut, the Dream Spider. A dynamic, vibrant character design that members knew was pretty special but we didn't really know anything about them. Well, now we know that they have intentions of continuing narratives with this character because they will be featured prominently in the upcoming run, Edge of Spider-Verse, issue number four, which has spiked this comic on the list up 200% increase in copies sold week over week. The solicitation reads, Dream Spider Returns, the new spider character from the hit Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man miniseries returns in her first solo adventure. Also, what if that radioactive spider we all know and love bit, wait for it, J. Jonah Jameson. So we're seeing an increase of copies sold of 200%, all because of this solicitation. And when we chatted about this comic last, just a few weeks ago, there were no CGC comics to talk about, no highs to talk about. Well, I just told you, it's hitting about $100 for a CGC 9.8, but the record high was shortly after our video landed, where it hit $150, and that was the first two sales that hit the internet. And now, we went from zero to 47 slabs that exist since then. So CGC is clearly pumping out these grades very quickly. There are a total of 35 graded comics on the CGC census. I think this is a situation where you may want to be patient, wait a little bit, especially after this kind of debut in her own solo series to decide whether or not you want to pay $100 for a 9.8 or maybe just, I don't know, buy a Noctera 1 at 9.8 for 35 bucks. Just another good reason to download the best comic app in existence, Key Collector Comics. If you use Kotom 101, you don't just support the show, but you unlock a free two-week subscription of the app that gives you access to a handful of categories that will keep you ahead of the marketplace and possibly make you some money. Take a look at this category, Future Keys. This book on the list 
Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man number five spiked because the future key Edge of Spider-Verse number four landed on it. Key Collector scrubs all of the comics that are being solicited and decides if there's any potential hint that there may be something big in the issue and places it in this category for you to consider. There are hundreds of comics that come out, but only a handful of them get a synopsis that may lead you to believe that there may be something worth specking on. And this is the category you gotta follow to keep up on it. And now we're at the list at number eight. We have Guardians of the Galaxy Annual number one. This came out in 1991, and this is a very affordable book. $7 average sales. 9.8 CGC in April of this year went for $100. This right here, to me, is a comic book not to buy at a 9.8. It's a comic to hunt for for a dollar, for $5, in a near mint or better status, and get it graded yourself because of a 10x increase with that slab. We have the first appearance of Kruger. I can't even find a way to say the name because the character doesn't even speak. His mouth is not there. He speaks telepathically because he is a Sorcerer Supreme of the 31st century. In the comics, he was trained by Doctor Strange and becomes a mentor to other sorcerers. However, he was barely utilized in the comics. Is his name Kruger or Krugar? I imagine it's the latter, but I do like saying the former because I love horror movies. I digress, we're seeing a 700% increase in copies sold this week because he is slated to appear in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which makes sense with his Easter egg post credit scene at the end of Guardians 2. A 700% increase in copies sold is very strong, but it makes sense because the movie is set to premiere May 5th of this year. There are many Guardians that are going to be doing their final time on the screen. We know Drax is finished here. We know that Rocket Raccoon may die this next movie. And knowing that Gamora rumors are circulating that we're gonna see her last role here, who are the other cosmic characters that are gonna be lifted up that we're gonna follow long term, i.e., we probably are going to have some characters introduced more prominently in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and members are trying to stay ahead of the curve and secure what books they can. I gotta hear what the community thinks about this next spec because oh my gosh, has this book dropped mightily. We have Venom Lethal Protector number four, Eddie Brock going full anti-hero, headed to San Francisco to give him some time away from the amazing Spider-Man happenings, finding himself and doing some work with the homeless living underground in a society. It's a strange run, but everyone's gotta read it. And in issue four, we actually get introduced to his lineage? You know, the other symbiotes that were all introduced in this issue. We have the first appearance of Agony, Lasher, Phage, and Riot, who we saw in the first Venom movie. Well, we have the first appearance of Scream in this issue, which is clearly a fan favorite. I mean, Scream got their own miniseries like just last year. I digress, because we're seeing an increase of copies sold of 273% this week after Juno Temple's casting in Venom 3 is leading people to think that they may portray Scream. Now I do like the word of caution that Key Collector puts as it pertains to the spec because Scream is very similar to Shriek who made their debut in Venom 2. It would be a strange character to introduce in Venom 3 because it's so much alike, but that's how this goes. And the spec is so affordable that it's driving the sales up. But this book has dropped like crazy. We're seeing $30 average sales. The heights this book reached was back in March 2021 when the Venom spec was off the chain and it was hitting $366 at a 9.8. The last GPA sales shows a 9.8 selling in April of a lonely $70. What do you think about this spec? What do you think about them utilizing Scream? And considering that Shriek just made their debut in Venom 2, which didn't go that well, is this worth buying right now? Whether it's for the price or for the spec, I wanna know your thoughts. Keep in mind, Venom 3 is a long ways away. Like we just found out about the Joker movie beginning filming and that's not slated till 2024. Venom 3 hasn't even begun filming. We're probably not gonna see this movie for a couple years. Comic fam, if you want to support what we do, I have a really easy way for you to do it. You give me an excuse to send you comics every single month. 
$35 gets you a box of comics for me, and we're sending out one per box in the May Mystery Mail Call, a Ariel Diaz Hollow's Eve trade dress, one per box. And it's not stopping there. I also have a Guardians of the Galaxy 1, just in time for Guardians 3. Believe it or not, I think I was the only store, we teamed up with Davis Ryder, Carnivore Comics, and Comic Exposure to do a Guardians variant with Ben Harvey. And for whatever reason, I'm in Vegas and I'm the only store that has done a Guardians variant. And one per box, everyone gets a trade dress. Join the community, link in the description, or just go to ComicTom101.com to support the show. And now we're back at the list at number six with a fan favorite, the first appearance of the Scarlet Spider, Ben Riley, Spider-Man. Web of Spider-Man 118, this debuted in 1994, and it's seeing a $100 average sale. Now, this book hit heights of $11.85 back in 2022 for a CGC 9.8. You can secure this book for between six and $700 right now at the same grade. And this is a comic book that has been spiking since last year, largely because of the narrative that was happening in Amazing Spider-Man, the Beyond run. He was a prevalent character, he became a villain, and definitely was a main focus over the last six months, but this has nothing to do with that. Right now we're seeing spec point towards Scarlet Spider because of voice casting that is being kept secret, not just to the public, but to the very members who are part of the Across the Spider-Verse team. We know we're gonna get Scarlet Spider. We even saw a Trouble board game toy or something a few months back showing Scarlet Spider in the background, very comic accurate costumes. That spiked the book then. Well, we're seeing an increase of 127% this past week because people have been talking about the hype of them getting a crazy dope voice actor to portray the role for the animation that is slated to come out very soon. This is what the co-directors had to say in a recent interview, which is clearly spiking this book. I can't wait for people to hear who voices him. The actor's identity still hasn't been released, but I love our Scarlet Spider actor. Not even the actors know. Everyone is sworn to secrecy and they record alone. So most of them are discovering with the public who is in the film they've been making. Their reactions have been pretty hilarious. We have gotten word that Andy Samberg is gonna be doing the voice of a character in this movie, but I don't know if these two stories are indeed connected. What I do know is that the movie's gonna drop June 2nd, 2023, this year, and I'm so stoked to watch it because the first movie was so good. And now we're at the list at number five. I have to know your thoughts about this in the comment section below because I'm torn, comic fam. Flashpoint number one, the comic book that was literally solicited after the new Flash trailer dropped. DC's like, if you like the Flash movie, read Flashpoint. So we got a lot of people buying Flashpoint number one. This is the first full appearance of Thomas Wayne as Batman in an alt reality caused by the events of Flashpoint. This book is hitting $35 average sales. It's dropped a lot recently. The heights it reached was $450 back in February of this year for a CGC 9.8. And the last sale clocked in at $290. And an increase of 400% in copies sold is very strong and it's because of the trailer and I don't know how to feel. I'm torn. On one hand, you have people seeing this movie touting it as one of the best superhero films they've ever seen. And then on the other hand, we know they just said that after watching Ezra Miller on the screen for like two hours straight. It's almost preposterous to think about. I also wanna know your thoughts about Flashpoint number one in the comment section below. I'm feeling a strong weight to purchase this book because an increase of 400% is really strong. But as it pertains to spec, most of the time when movies loosely base the script off of a comic book, it's so loose that it doesn't typically maintain after the movie. And it's typically a better time to buy post-release. Real talk, comic fam. I actually missed doing a couple numbers on the list in my room. I don't know, it happens. Number four on the list. Chris Claremont goodness, X-Men 141. We have part one of Days of Futures Past. X-Men 141? Do it. That's... Quintessential issue. You want to talk about parallel timelines? That's where it basically, you know, although Kang had done it before, but after Claremont and Byrne, and how many times have they gone back to that story? Nine million times. Also, if you want that there, you've got to go back to 141. And 142 is a beautiful cover as well. 141 is the last issue where it's unofficial, it's officially Named just X Men, not Uncanny X Men. Next issue yes. is Uncanny X Men. And so. unfortunately, issue 143, 
John Byrne leaves, but we still have that magnificence. Well, there you go. We have a prequel series in the works. It's in solicitation. You heard it from Steve, because when Steve's here, you always got to go, boom! $125 average sales. Oh, we got Davis Ryder here. You want to hit him with a high sale? This went for over $1,080 in April. April, $1,000 for a X-Men 141. I think that's a pretty good deal. Price. There's a prequel that just hit in solicitations. Mark Guggenheim, who we've actually done a bunch of uh, coverage of his books in the past. The man behind the Arrowverse is bringing the prequel. As Steve said, they've redone this story so many times, and I'm still going to buy it. I don't care. It's called Days of Future Past Doomsday, issue number one. It drops in stores July 12th. And take a look at this Rob Liefeld cover. Outstanding. And I'm going to do a shameless plug. Crashdown comes out July 5th. So while you're ordering your Days of Future Past, just go ahead and order some Crashdown. Number three on the list from 1988 is Web of Spider-Man, issue number 36, the first appearance of Tombstone. Can you believe it? After a year, the only information we've had on Sony's El Muerto Spider-Man movie is that Bad Bunny is going to take the leading role, which was... Very interesting to say okay. the least. And a year's gone by, we've got no news, except for that we may have the villain. The only villain that he goes up against in the comic book, El Diablo, rumors are that it's gonna be Tombstone, which spiked this book a thousand percent hot damn. If you wanna get this book right now, it's $20 average sales. Recent high sale was $325 for a CGC 9.8 which seems kind of pricey, except for when you consider the heights this book reached, which was $725 in 2021. Copyright infringement. Take this. <laughs> that was Rob, and he just got a Daredevil 1 at a 9.8, one of three in existence. We got some pretty cool friends, to say the least. Marvin Jones, you know him as the voice of Tombstone from the PS4 game. Apparently, Sony is kind of taking a play from the Marvel Disney book and bringing one of the voice actors to the screen. Now, this is just a rumor, but Tombstone's beloved. We all watched them in the, like, the Saturday morning cartoon animated series. And I don't know, I'm gonna be watching El Muerto pretty closely because after the Rhino news, which I'll get to in a little bit, I think you will want to as well. Before we get to number two, I have a big debut here. This is the trailer for Crashdown, a comic book that I've been working on for a year. We have artist Ben Temple Smith from 30 Days a Night, a living horror legend, and my best friend, Fire Guy Ryan. We put our heart into this. We hope you like it. Crashdown is in previews now. Life beyond our home on Earth is now possible thanks to our galactic research scouting team and advancements in suspended animation and cryotechnology. With the sun's demise imminent, we are now 72 hours from departure for planet Empyrean. With a 95% chance for Earth-like conditions, your efforts will be vital for the successful continuation of our species. On behalf of the entire human race, we here at Apollo Industries thank you for your service. With the dramatic increase in solar rays, 95% chance for Earth-like conditions, Please pre-order Crashdown. I'll put the link in the description. Ask your LCS. It's the best way to support what we do. And looking at the list at number two, we have Star Wars The High Republic Adventures, Quest of the Jedi, number one. This book just came out and is hitting $20 average sales. It was picked as a key of the week on Key Collector for good reason. We have the first appearance of a plethora of individuals in classic Star Wars style. This book is very intense Star Wars stuff. I mean, they go deep. There's a lot of brand new first appearances and the debut of a new Sith. But when it really comes down to spec, this is what's going on. We've seen lots of interest in this era in the last few weeks. You know, ever since Star Wars Celebration released some more info about Star Wars, The Acolyte, which is the new live action series they're doing set at the end of the High Republic era. I think people are just going bananas for High Republic stuff and snatching up any and all first appearances they can find. And this right here is a classic example of just that. Securing a $20 Star Wars book that has so many first appearances is essentially paying a little bit 
of an inflated amount just to be safe and just so that you know you have a high grade copy waiting for you if anything happens. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. I'm here every single week for the comic fam and the number one trending book, the most popular book in the world this week is Amazing Spider-Man 41, the first appearance of the Rhino. And I am so psyched. This right here has me hyped to no end because I have long given up on Sony's ability to debut a fantastic superhero movie. They kind of redeemed themselves a little bit with the most recent Spider-Man film. However, news about a Madam Web movie? News about Bad Bunny, a Muerto we just got done talking about? A Craven movie? Like, what are they doing? It doesn't seem like it's gonna work. But then we found out this past week that it's gonna be R-rated that it's hyper violent. And there was a select group of individuals who were previewed to the trailer and they were astonished. The trailer was described as being hyper violent, a strong R rated film. Craven biting off the nose of an antagonist and spitting the remains at the camera. This is something that I didn't expect considering that Morbius didn't even show blood. And that was a vampire movie and they didn't show blood. You know, it makes sense why these things aren't working over at Sony, so they're gonna try some new things. Our rated film has me all in. I wanna see a brutal Craven movie. And the main antagonist is the Rhino. And apparently this isn't the same Rhino we got in films past. Less mechanical, more natural, going full transformation into the beast. We have an increase of 250% for a very pricey ASM comic book. It's a classic. Now, average high sales are 2.7 thousand. That's not gonna do you much good because you can get this book for way cheaper. The most recent 9.2 sale was in March of this year for $3,600. The most recent 9.0 sale was in February of this year for $3,360. And I suspect that these books are gonna keep going up in price because that R rating has just provided so much hope for not just Sony, not just ASM, but for the Rhino. If you wanna keep up with the drops that I do, you gotta join my newsletter, link in the description. If I do a low print exclusive, I email out our followers on our email list first, so you have a chance of getting it at the best deal I can provide it. And to incent members to join my email list, I will be giving away a graded copy of this very issue on the list. It's a mid-grade copy of Amazing Spider-Man 41, and all you have to do is sign up to my email list and anticipate an email from me, because if you are picked at random, I'm just gonna send you this hot comic book. I appreciate your time today, comic fam. As always, geek, geek responsibly. Geek responsibly, all the way from Hawaii. Steve from Torpedo, geek responsibly. Geek, geek responsibly. responsibly, or else. Geek responsibly. Geek responsibly. This is Tyler Kirkham. Geek responsible. My name is Javon Jordan, aka Illus Illuminati, Woo! aka the Body Snatcher. It's true. Geek responsibly. And make sure you go get cracked out ASAP. I'm Aaron Bartling. Geek responsibly. All right, it's Lo and Melinda with Melinda's comics. Yes, and geek responsibly, guys. <laughs> this is JBG of Ninja Funk, and as always, geek responsibly. Nuff said.